So I'm going to first talk about parity test. So say for example you're studying a population of leaves. So you take the leaves and you initially leave them in the shade. So they start out in the shade and you measure their size every so often. So for each leaf, you have a bunch of data points from when they were in the shade. So for one leaf, you have a bunch of measurements for size for when it was in the shade. And then for that same particular leaf, once you take the leaf out in the sun, you start measuring the size of the leaf. And again, you uh, record a bunch of data points for the size over days or so. If you're comparing the means of these data points, you'll, you will perform a paired t-test on it. So notice that for each leaf, you have two means. So the two means that you have are linked because they're from the same leaf. So that's why it's the paired T test is also sometimes called a dependent or linked test. Notice that there is some time difference between when the two means are taken. In the case of a two sample or independent t-test, we are taking the mean of the data points we get for the size of the sun exposed leaves and then we're going to take the mean of all the sizes we get for shade exposed leaves. So the two means are not linked in any way. They're not from the same leaf. So therefore they're independent and there are two they're for the two sample t-test. So what if you did a study of three different groups of leaves, all exposed to varying levels of sunlight. So, three different groups of leaves with three varying levels of sunlight exposure. And you measure, so this is, um, maybe 10%, 30%, 50% sunlight exposure, and you measure the sizes of each of the leaves in each group. And then you take the means of each group and you compare them to each other. That is called an, an ANOVA, but in particular, it is called a single factor ANOVA because you're only compare, you're only changing the levels of one factor, which is sunlight exposure between the three groups. So an ANOVA compares the means of at least three different groups. The groups are divided by extent of variable exposure. So for example, as I just explained, those leaves were divided into groups by 10%, 30%, 50% exposure. Now, if you have two variables, say your uh, sun and shade, then it's a two-factor ANOVA. So ANOVA, whether it's one factor or two-factor, 
it's dependent on how many variables you have. But the groups themselves in an ANOVA, of which you have at least three, are always divided by extent of variable exposure. Suppose you have two groups of leaves, and this is my discussion now on chi-squared. So say you have, again, two groups of leaves, and one group is sun exposed and the other is in the shade. So if you measure how many leaves have grown fungus in each group, and how many have it, you have an, a number of occurrences, meaning you can make a table so um, group and sun shade And then fungus, no fungus. So say out of a hundred leaves in each group, ten of the sun exposed develop fungus and ninety don't. And in the shade group, thirty of the thirty of them uh, develop fungus and seventy don't. So you compare these uh, the proportion of occurrences in each group to what you predict in the chi-squared test. And notice that we're comparing occurrences. We're using occurrences and not means. Fisher's exact test is used in the same kind of situations you use chi-squared tests when you are use, using it on occurrences or how, how many times an event happened and you're measuring it in two uh, different groups. But the difference is that it's in studies where there's low power. So, for example, if we only had groups of 5 or 10 leaves per category, so like 5 sun exposed and 5 shade exposed, and we were looking for the number of fungal fungally infected or non-fungally infected leaves we had, then we would use Fisher's exact test.